Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I figured since I did so many reviews for horror films, I figured I'd do a comedy this time. I recently saw the film This Is The End. I loved it. It stars uh, Seth Rogen, Jay Burchill, James Franco, Danny McBride, Craig Robertson, and Jonah Hill. It's one of the funniest films I've seen all year. Uh, <laughs> it's probably the funniest film I've seen this year so far. I haven't seen We're the Millers yet. When I see that one, I will do a review for it. But as for this film, I loved it. It's basically a parody of The Rapture. At first, I thought it might have been Aliens when I first watched it, but turns out it's pretty much a parody of The Rapture, and it's just hilarious. But anyway, just to jump into the film, you got uh, Jay Burchill arriving into L.A. Seth Rogen's there. They're good buddies, and they've kind of grown apart. Jay Burchill feels like they've grown apart because Seth Rogen's been hanging out with James Franco and fucking Jonah Hill a lot, and uh, Seth Rogen feels like Jay Burchill's kind of stayed the same instead of changed. Uh, they head over to Seth Rogen's place, smoke a lot of weed, play a lot of Xbox. And then Seth Rogen wants to go over and hang out at James Franco's place. There's a huge party there. Jay Burchill's like, fuck this shit, I don't want to go. They head over there anyway. Jay Burchill's miserable, he doesn't want to go there. You got Michael Sarah there, Jason Siegel there, Rihanna there, fucking Chris Fremont's Plast there. Shitload of actor cameos. Uh, you got Michael Sarah doing a fuckload of coke. And uh, <laughs> uh, Jay Burchill heads up to the bathroom. He sees Michael Sarah and they're like having sex with two chicks or something like that. And it's... It's pretty funny seeing Michael Sarah that way, although that might, that's probably the way he is in real life. Basically, after that, um, Jay Burchill wants to head to the store because he wants to get the fuck out of there and get some cigarettes. And Seth Rogen goes with him. They're there. This lady's being a dick to the customers there. She's like the cashier or whatever. Uh, then they get pulled up into the sky by a big like, white light. At first, I thought it might have been aliens or something because I didn't know anything about the movie too much going in. Uh, but it turns out they're being sucked into heaven, so it's pretty much the rapture, and they're being took into heaven. And the cashier lady, the fucking building falls apart and crushes her and kills her. Uh, Seth Rogen and uh, Jay Burchill, <coughs> sorry, head outside. Uh, they get some decent action. People getting run over by vehicles. Um, uh, fucking vehicles coming through, plowing through everything. There's fire shooting out everywhere. Pretty cool scene. They head back to James Franco's house. Seth Rogen acts like a dick and acts like he didn't see any light. People being abducted, which makes you think, well, this guy actually is a pretty big douche because he, well, he is. Well, he's not backing his old friend up. He's fucking siding with his new friends, even though he's known his old friend way longer, but whatever. Uh, you jump straight into the film here. Everything's okay. Not once the fucking earthquake hits. They all run outside. The big hole in the ground opens up, and you get Michael Sarah get killed by a three little lamp post that impels him. Uh, <laughs> people who don't like Michael Sarah be okay that he dies. I thought he was actually kind of funny in this film with the drugs and shit. Uh, the ground opens up, a bunch of actors fall down in it, including Chris Freeman's blast. They all die, basically, I guess, go to hell, because it's a portal to hell. Um, uh, Jay Burchill's hanging there, fucking this actor's like, uh, take my hand, and he's like, well, no, Jay Burchill's like, come on, man, give me your hand, I'll swing you up. And he's like, you sure you can support my weight, you sure? And he's like, yeah, man, and he grabs his hand, just predictable, of course, he drops him, but it's funny the way they play it. Okay, uh, then base, and then, uh, back at, uh, well, fucking, shh, try to spit it out here. All these guys kind of merged together for me after a while. They all seem like the same person. We all love weed so much in this film. <laughs> but what I was trying to say is that Jay Burchill makes it up out of the hole. Uh, they all make it back in James Franco's house. The main cast does. They're all there. Uh, Jay Burchill's like talking to Seth Rogen. He's like, man, I think this might be Judgment Day from the Bible. And Seth Rogen's like, Judgment Day? You mean like Terminator 2? You talking about is Skynet taking over? <laughs> it's so fucking funny. The only thing that really hurts this movie is too many arguments in the film. It kind of drags a little bit. For every overdone argument, there's funny-ass shit that's funny as fuck that happens afterwards. Uh, basically, the next morning, Danny McBride, who slept through everything, wakes up, eats all their food, wastes all their water. Everybody wakes up the next morning. James Franco's there, and he's like, God, it's Danny. He made it. He's eating all the fucking food. It's so funny. He runs over there. They all try to stop him from eating everything, and Danny McBride's like, guys, chill out. I think the fucking Green Goblin can afford some more bacon. It's so funny. And all at once, this dude sticks his head in. He wants them to help him. And through the movie, Seth Rogen's talking about how he was titty fucked by a bunch of cops when he was arrested back in the day. And he has like a phobia of it. And James Franco's like, man, we don't want to let you in here. You might be a rapist or something. You might try to titty fuck us all. And that guy's like trying to get in. He's like, guys, I'll titty fuck all of you guys if you just let me in. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And all at once, his, fuck, his body gets ripped apart and his fucking head falls down in there. And they all start kicking it like a soccer ball. He's all freaked out. And then Craig uh, Robertson puts fucking a blanket, I mean not a blanket, but a rug over top of it. And they just, James Franco like pushes it out of the way. It's so funny. And then uh, Danny McBride, they finally cue him in on what's going on. He finally believes it. Um, you look outside, you get some okay CGI, a little flimsy with uh, all of LA, lost, well, all of LA on fire. 
uh, but the CGI in this film is good though. It isn't bad. It's used. I don't like CGI, but in here it's used for the right, 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 right reasons. Fuck. I have trouble spitting that shit sometimes for some reason. Uh, it's used for the right reasons, and the characters in it that need it are are the ones that are CGI, which is good. Like the Minotaur and giant dragon demon and Satan himself even makes an appearance in this fucker. And so they're all hiding out in the house, and they take what water they've got left. Um, Emma Watson shows up. Uh, Danny McBride's saying that he's such a huge Harry Potter fan, wants to ask her all these questions. And James Franco's like, cool it, Dumbledore. It's pretty funny. And fucking uh, Jay Birch was talking, we better not try to, we better not give off a rapey vibe, or at least try not to, because there's so many guys, and she's just one chick. And we've got to make her feel safe. She overhears them, thinks they're going to rape her. She comes out of there. She takes an axe and fucking hits Seth Rogen in the face with it, well, with the stick in. Uh, she takes all their water, basically just fucks them over and takes all their shit and hits the road. So they have no water left. James Franco's making, uh, he's like recording everything that happens using the camera from 127 hours, the actual prop or whatever. Um, he keeps talking about what a dick Danny McBride is and how he hates that motherfucker and it's so funny. And, uh, okay, so they need some water and there's, uh, only water they have left. And the only water James Franco has is in his basement. All way to get to it is to go outside and go through the basement door that's connected to the house. So they have to draw matches. Whoever gets the burnt one has to go out there. Craig Robinson gets the burnt one. He heads out there. And fucking he gets attacked by a demon, gets scared, runs back inside. You don't see the demon yet. Uh, he makes it back in there. Um, he's like, fuck that shit. I ain't going back out there. And they're all talking at night and st shit like that. And Craig Robinson's like, you know, I think it might be Judgment Day. And uh, Jay Burch was like, yeah, duh, I thought I said that already. So Craig Robinson's like, well, what should we do? And he's like, well, Jay Burch says that if we do better, try to better ourselves, that we'll get accepted into heaven too, basically. So uh, then they, James Franco basically realizes that all they got to do is dig the fucking like, hole through the ground and they can get down in there to the water. And so they spend like hours doing that. You get an overdrawn argument with James Franco and Danny McBride because James Franco hates him. Danny McBride, like, spermed all over his fucking porno mag that James Franco had. You get into an argument that lasts forever. But like I said, for overdone arguments in this film, or for every stupid scene, you get a hilarious fucking scene afterwards. And I'll just say, again, I love this movie. And it's already, I'll just tell you, it's a four-star film out of four. It's a great comedy. Um, but anyway, they make it down in there. And Seth Rogen and Jay Burchill are down there. They get scared by a cardboard cutout of fucking uh, James Franco from Spider-Man 3 because he keeps all his movie props, including this fake gun he walks around with that's got blanks and it's from Fly Boys. They get down there, they find the water, bring it back up. Danny McBride wastes all the fucking water again. He like pours it out everywhere because he is mad because he wants more water than everybody else because he's basically a dick. And it makes you not really like him just like everybody else doesn't like him. James Franco says, fuck this shit, let's throw this son of a bitch out here. Um, he, Danny McBride gives a big sob story like he, he never gets invited to any of the parties, blah, 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 shit like that. Um, James Franco feels sorry for him, and then he says, why don't you stay? Danny McBride's like, fuck this shit, I'm gonna go, you know, you guys want me here. He's, James Franco says, so if you're gonna go, take this weapon with you. And he takes the blank, the gun that shoots the blanks, the fake gun, and he fucking fires it and tries to shoot all them like a dick. And they said, well, fuck you, McBride, get out of here, basically. So he hits the road. Um, okay, so he hits the road. And then before, well, before he leaves, before I forget, he's like, uh, no, he basically tells uh, Seth Rogen and everybody there that Jay Burchill, um feels like they're uh, feels like him and Seth Rogen had been growing apart, and he came to L.A. not too long ago, and didn't, and Danny McBride saw him, and he told Danny not to tell uh, Seth that he was there, that he didn't want him to know, because he didn't want to hang out with him, basically. And so Danny McBride leaves, Seth Rogen and him uh, start arguing. Jonah Hill comes over there, he acts overly nice in this film. <laughs> why I don't know uh Jay Burchill thing he, I guess he's doing like a funny parody of himself he acts overly nice to like everybody and tries to be super positive and Jay Burchill thinks well basically that he just secretly hates him and that he's just pretending to be really nice to him and so he comes over there and starts butting in and then Jay Burchill gets mad punches him in the face I don't blame him uh, next scene is Jay is uh, Jonah Hill basically praying to God telling him it's Jonah Hill for Moneyball which I thought was funny that uh, he was, just wants him to kill Jay Burchill and then fucking Jonah Hill gets possessed in a parody of Rosemary's Baby, which I thought was hilarious. And he's like, this is this is not a dream. This is really happening. <laughs> but it's so funny. And then they got to get some more water because fuck face wasted it all. And so Jay Burchill. Well, no, they draw um, matches again. Whoever gets the burnt match has to go do it. Seth Rogen gets it. He bitches out. Um, 
Jay Bartzell goes and does it. And, uh, Craig Robinson comes with him. They head over to the neighbor's house, get water and supplies. Jonah Hill is possessed. <laughs> he runs around the house, uh, fucking beating up Seth Rogen and James Franco. And James Franco's like, he's fucking, uh, he's got super strength, man. Watch out. They run and hide in the closet. And James Franco's like, don't breathe so hard, Seth. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Just hilarious the way they play it. I think half the dialogue in this motherfucker was improvised. <laughs> uh... Jay Burchill and Craig Robinson are over there getting water and supplies. A big fucking Minotaur crashes through there. It's CGI, but it's done well. It chases after him, tries to fucking kill him. Chases after Jay Burchill. Craig Robinson saves him. They make it out of there, man. Just make it back over to James Franco's house. Um, Jonah Hill's possessed, chasing after him. Jay, Jay Burchill's got a ball bat. Fucking lazy mouth. They tie him up to the bed, and they got to do an exorcism on him. And you get a funny-ass fucking parody of the exorcist. Well, slight parody of the exorcist, but it's funny as shit. Jay Burchill, like, tapes some uh, fucking kitchen appliances together into a cross, and he's trying to, like, cast the demon out of him, and he keeps repeating lines from the exorcist. Power of Christ compels you, and Seth Rogen's like, man, that's not an exorcism, you're just repeating shit from a movie. And he's like, it's not just a movie, it's a manual's guide to doing exorcisms or something like that, but it's hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> they start, Seth Rogen and Jay Burchill get into an argument again, they start fighting. Uh, they, they discover that James Franco's been hiding extra food. Uh, there's some candles lit next to the bed. They fall over the bed, catches on fire. Fucking Jonah Hill catches on fire. Starts chasing after him while he's on fire. You get a decent action scene. <coughs> Sorry. Um, he's chasing after him while he's on fire. Uh, he burns the whole fucking house down, basically, and all falls down on top of him. The rest of the guys manage to make it outside. Uh, J uh James Franco's got a vehicle. They want to make it to his vehicle. Get the fuck out of Dodge. Uh, there's a big bat winged demon there. Good CGI once again. Uh, they have to get out of there. So Craig Robinson sacrifices himself so they can get away, and before the creature kills him, he gets accepted into heaven, and he gets pulled up into heaven. The rest of them make it into the vehicle. James Franco decides he wants to do the same thing, that they should all do the same thing so they can all get accepted into heaven, too. Uh, then the big truck comes by and knocks their vehicle out of the way. It's fucking Danny McBride with Channing Tatum, who he's, like, been fucking in the ass, which is just hilarious. <laughs> It's actually Channing Tatum doing a cameo in this film playing himself, and it's funny as fuck because he talks about how Danny McBride, well, Danny McBride talks about how he's been butt-fucking him, which is both scary and hilarious at the same time. But they're like a group of cannibals, and James Franco decides to sacrifice himself so he can go to heaven, too. Um, Seth Rogen and Jay Burch will run for it. They get out of there. Uh, James Franco sacrificing himself. And then uh, all, well, he gets to go to heaven too, but he's really he, he acts really vain and starts giving Danny McBride the finger and everything. So he gets denied, and they basically eat James Franco and he dies. And then uh, they chase after Seth Rogen and Jay Burchill. They hide. They don't find him. Uh, and then the devil himself shows up with his dick hanging out, which is just fucking hilarious. <laughs> he shows up there, and then uh, uh, Seth Rogen and Jay Burchill think they're gonna die, and uh, so they basically make amends with the relationship. Jay Burchill says he's sorry for not changing. And them growing apart and everything. And Seth Rogen apologizes to him for everything that's happening. They make amends. And then Jay Burchill gets accepted into heaven. And he wants to take Seth Rogen with him. He grabs him. Takes him up there. But they both can't go because Seth Rogen's not meant to go. So he lets go to sacrifice himself. Uh, and he gets rid of falling to the devil's mouth, basically. And then fucking this, well, a beam of light shoots down. Knocks the devil like backwards in a pretty cool action scene. Um... And Seth Rogen gets accepted into heaven, too, for sacrificing himself. They make it up to heaven, uh, and you get the funniest fucking line imaginable that I've heard in a long time in a movie. Kind of the, the heaven's gates open up, and Craig Robinson standing there, and he goes, Welcome to heaven, motherfuckers! <laughs> and it's hilarious. I love it. I can't, uh, I can't wait to buy this movie on DVD so I can watch it multiple times. It's funny as shit. Uh, and basically for the ending, you, they walk in there, Craig Robinson smoking a joint, Seth Rogen's like, you, you got weed? And he's like, anything you can think of, man, you can have. And all at once, Seth Rogen gets a, like, I believe it's a rascal. You hold on to the handles like this, and you can, like, ride on it. I think you call it a rascal. And then Seth Rogen gets a joint and starts smoking it. And it's so funny. And the ending is a really feel-good ending and a happy ending. And uh, if you're feeling depressed or something and you just want to laugh and feel happy, I'd say watch this movie and he'll get big good pick-me-up. Uh, and then at the end, uh, Jay Burns was like, uh, so anything we think of? And then the fucking Backstreet Boys show up and start singing. I don't like the Backstreet Boys, but they're used here appropriately. And it's funny just the thought of them showing up. And never. And then Seth Rogen, Jay Burchill, and Craig Robinson just start dancing. And it's, it's fucking hilarious. And that's pretty much just the end of the movie. It's a happy ending. It ends happy. All the actors do fine. As far as the movie goes, I love it. All the actors do slight little parodies of themselves. You get little inside jokes like when Jay Burchill first arrives at the airport. Him and Seth Rogen are leaving, and this reporter's like, hey, Seth Rogen, when are you going to do a serious movie? Do the Seth Rogen laugh. 
shit like that that I find funny. But yeah, the movie's good, and I say it's definitely worth seeing in theaters, and I wish I had seen it in theaters, but watching it online, it's still a blast. And I say anybody who likes comedy should definitely check this film out, or anybody that's depressed and wants to feel better. The only reason I can see people not liking this movie, like I said, is you just don't like the actors. So in closing, I love this film. It's a four-star film out of four, and I'll see you guys again with another review.